No. We are airing in Boston, Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. How about that? Washington, Oregon, Idaho, California, Arizona, Colorado, Oklahoma, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Vermont, Maine. I've been everywhere, man. (laughs) This is the Rod Peterson Show. It is, and uh, welcome, everybody. Happy Flame Tech Football Friday. You've been waiting all week for it. We've got Hall of Fame Rough Riders broadcaster John Frenzy with us here in the broadcast booth. How are you doing, Frenzy? I'm doing great, Rod. Just doing great. I, well, I am not really, but I'm, I'm so disappointed about the CFL situation. Otherwise, I'm, otherwise, I'm doing super. Otherwise, you're doing super. Well, I know you're going to be happy. You're excited at the guest list here today. Yeah. We've got Brian Baldinger. NFL alum, yeah, currently guy. with NFL Network, a tremendous guy. Yeah. We've got the former chairman of the CFL Board of Governors, Jim Lawson, now the CEO of Woodbine Entertainment in Toronto. He's going to join us to talk a little horse racing. Lynch just chomping at the bit. See the pun there? The horse uh, very racing. good. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's good. Going to talk <laughs> some uh, CFL with Jim Lawson. Jim knows he's not going to get out of here without talking well, some Well, Lawson CFL. was one of the best presidents they ever had. Absolutely. And a pro hockey player, by the way, in the Montreal Canadiens organization. You know so. why? What's because he cared about the thing. Oh, you are hot. You're, You're ready to go, up. aren't you, Lynch? Better be shut up right now. Really. <laughs> uh, and Jim, uh, sorry, Jason Tatarnik's going to join us, the head coach and general manager of the Estevan Bruins, and uh, we'll tell you why in a moment. But this is the warm-up. It's brought to you by the Four Seasons Sports Palace, your home for the National Hockey League, UFC, and Regina Pats Hockey on the big screen, which will have a game this afternoon at 4 p.m. Mountain, Regina Pats, God's team, against the Saskatoon Blades. DuPont's team. So those are the guests. Let's hit what? Let's hit the quick six show topic, please. Director Jordan, thank you. Usurping all of the quick six show topics is this tweet that came down from Dave Naylor. I didn't realize that it took so long. It was like two hours ago. I just saw it. But from Naylor, TSN CFL Insider, I quote, best way I can describe current situation in the CFL Players did not sign up for pay cut after pay cut and uncertainty over when and if they'd be getting paid. Owners did not sign up for paying salaries of players with no revenue for their business. There are no winners here. So munch on that for a second, and I'll fly through the quick six show topics because it's really going to be all football today anyways. But these are my thoughts, uh, beginning with Thursday night's uh, NHL leftovers. It was a historic night in the NHL, okay? Sidney Crosby hit 1,300 points, and Johnny's the fastest player to do it. I find that almost hard to believe. Oh, you do. Considering Gretzky and Mario, but Sid did it. So kudos to him. Mika Zibanejad, six points for the New York Rangers against the Philly Flyers. Second time he did that against the same team. Nobody in NHL history has ever done it. Wow. Yes. And Rocco Grimaldi scored four goals for the Nashville Predators, and nobody's ever done that in Nashville history either. Who are these guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got you got to watch, Lynch. There's more than just football. Uh, goalies, learn to play the puck or do not play the puck. Looking at you, Jack Campbell. Direct, and I can't believe the Leafs came back to win that game in Ottawa last night. But it's just playing the puck isn't that hard if you're a goaltender. But learn how to do it if you're going to wander out of your net and stop giving it away. Uh, not a good night, night. Right. The Vegas Golden Knights got spanked by the Colorado Avalanche and we're covering that up like a turd in the sandbox. And moving on. And the Minnesota Wild <laughs> are on a roll. And Cam Talbot is... Is rolling. He's, he's the engineer of the train. He's the conductor. Cam Talbot, the guy that really got run out of Calgary in exchange for Jacob Markstrom. And that's my fifth leftover is the goalies and the coaches keep changing in Calgary. And the results are still the same. Have you noticed that? Yep. Revolving door yep. in the crease and on the, on the bench. Yep. Meanwhile, they're going to miss the playoffs again. Five coaches in the last five years? Six years? At least. I mean, it's insane. Bad. And when I say miss the playoffs again, they didn't miss the playoffs last year, nor the year before. So they're, re- they're regressing. Yeah, yeah. So that's what's happening with the Calgary Flames, and I can't believe it. Uh, point two, BCHL, AJHL leftovers. Here's what's happening with that. We broke the story that the BCHL has notified the Canadian Junior Hockey League that they are moving, they're separating, and they're going to be getting their own association out there in British Columbia. Nobody's argued that. 
The BC League has basically said no comment, which is a comment. It's happening. Now, I reported that four Alberta teams are going to be leaving as well to join them out there, and that's where things are getting sticky. Everybody's saying your information's false. Some teams are denying it, and I've been talking. Well, I, I'll just say this. One of the four teams that reported that I reported was going to be leaving, one of those teams told me, we're gone, and these three are coming with us. So how can I... That's what I was told by one of the teams. So just wait. The league issued a statement in Alberta saying, none of our teams have applied to move. I retweeted it and said, yet. And the other thing was, I was talking to a hockey guy. I'll give him a shout out. Sean Newman up in Lloyd Minster. He hosts the great Sean Newman podcast. He goes, I'm told, Rod, that you're a year ahead of your time. I said, well, that's not new. <laughs> but I said, if you're gonna if you're going to move... You probably uh, hadn't have to give a year's notice. So I think that's what's going to be going down in the Alberta Junior Hockey League. Uh, point three, Dub Hub, fantastic game yesterday. We called it DuPont and I. The Regina Pats knocked off the Prince Albert Raiders 5 3. The Brandon Wheat Kings won the Battle of Manitoba. They beat the Winnipeg Ice last night, the late game. And there are more games today. We're right back at it. 4 p.m. Mountain, Pats and Blades, as I said, followed by the Winnipeg Guys and the Swift Current Broncos. Point four, always fun. It's Friday. That means our top five, bottom five in the National Hockey League. Are you ready, Lynch? I'm ready. Here are our top five for the Rod Peterson Show. Can we get a drum roll, please? <laughs> Thank you. Number one team in the National Hockey That was quick. <laughs> Number one team, Tampa Bay Lightning. Number two team, New York Islanders. Number three team, the Carolina Hurricanes. Number four team, Vegas Golden Knights. And the top five team, the fifth team, the Edmonton Oilers. Which is great. Hey, hey he's yeah, applauding great. over here. <laughs> the Oilers have won three in a row, seven of their last ten. I knew Dave Tibbet Tibbet could do a job. Absolutely. And they they nudged their way into the top five of the Rod Peterson Show. Are you ready for the bottom five? Yeah. In reverse descending order, I okay? I number, know what you're say. number 27, Anaheim Ducks. Number 28, Detroit Red Wings. And 29, 30, 31, the Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> They're the worst team three times over, the Buffalo Sabres. And why did Ralph Kruger get a second chance to coach them? <laughs> I have no idea. The first time, the first time I remember telling you, Ralph Cooler shouldn't be coaching this team. And you said, oh, he was great over in Europe. He was great. They loved him in Europe. They got fired. Five years later, he's back in Buffalo as a head coach. He's fired again. I mean, the team's terrible. The guys are Look, what's, what's uh, Eichel done? Two oh, goals? nothing. And Taylor Hall wants out. And you saw that after last night's game. He's like, I'd take a trade. See ya. He's put on the shoot. And nobody can blame him. Anyways, moving on. Point five. Kyle Lowry remains a Raptor. How about all that pomp and circumstance going into the NBA trade deadline and then they don't even trade Kyle Lowry? Yeah. He was identified as the number one piece available, but they didn't move him. And did you see the Raptors president, Masai Ujiri, last night, what he said? You don't trade a guy like that. that I got it from him. You don't trade your stars, Lynch. Oh, I you know what it's going to say on your tombstone? And if I may, I, can I say what they're going to put on your tombstone what? when they go to chisel it? What? Don't trade your stars. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and two, oh. your record is what you are. Yeah, that's right. I There's got more. Nice, guy, nice guys run the Kinsman Club. Uh, Lip yesterday was after me all day because I said, I don't think they'll trade Lowry. He said, yes, they will. They'll trade Lowry for sure. And they didn't, eh? Yeah. They did not because you don't trade your stars. No. And he's now, 35. He's now 35. we're delve. Yeah, he's 35. But now we're delving in to the football talk. We got a few things here. Actually, before we do that, I do want to make a presentation. I'm drinking coffee out of my coffee mug from Joe Lazito Coliseum Chronicles, the Penalty Box podcast he hosts in Long Island, New York. Oh, you kidding? Where he watches every day. Yeah. On the Altus cable carrier there, and he's sent us gear, John. My God. Yeah, oh my Isn't God. That Coliseum fantastic. Chronicles t-shirt. Isn't that fantastic? Put this in the middle. And on the back, your source for Islanders Enforcer Talk. Well, you can oh, follow okay. them on Twitter, and I ask that you please do, at <laughs> Colisin Pin, sorry, Colisin Bin Pod. How about that? So Joe Lazito in New York has sent a shirt. So Lynch, put your hands up. Hey, How about that? How about that? Well, you will be putting that on by the end right of now. the day. 
Not right now, please. <laughs> We're not the ladies of South Regina that like to see you with your shirt off. Uh, no, so there you go, Joe. Oh, that's beautiful. The guy's great, Thank you. Eh? He's a great, he's a winner all no, the way. Get down there to see him? As you would say, he's a winner all the way. We're going to get down there to see him, do you think? Yeah, I would. Well, when they open the border, John, out of our control, right? Oh, that's right. Rich. So as we roll we along, across the border as anymore. we roll along in the warm up, the yeah. sixth point of the quick six show topics is the uh, headline at threedownnation.com that the CFL XFL deal could be worth $100 million U.S. in television rights and fees, the media rights worth $100 million U.S. I'll be honest. I read that in the Brand Center yesterday. I was getting ready for the hockey broadcast. And I'm like, whoa. And then I read the article. They quoted the sports business agency Octagon as saying this. I read more of the article, and I'm like, no. Oh, this is fake news. This is more fake news. You can say that the rights could be sold for $100 million U.S. I could say that my house is worth $2 million because that's how important it is to me. You know what I mean, John? Yeah, we sure got the do. notches on the door frame of the girls as they grew up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this, is very, this is worth $2 million to me. Yeah. Sure. No. It's worth what somebody is willing to pay for it. Well, there's a lot of action out there, a lot of news. The last XFL television deal, I believe, was for no money. Yes, they were on ESPN. Yes, they were on Fox. But they weren't getting any uh, rights fees from what I understand. So $100 million U.S.? Where are you coming up with this figure? Yeah, you could potentially sell it for that, but you need to build up the brand and have people realize it might not be a week away from folding every time that they play. Know what I'm saying? Of course I do. I folded all last year. Uh, that's why I say it's crazy to pay any attention to him. But the guy who's got the biggest story today, it's our commissioner, if you go to your computer. He's saying, that uh, we talked about things like gambling, how much money we could make, getting young people coming to the games. And then it just naturally flew, you know, just a conversation, conversation just naturally went to uh, how, how can we get together and make things better? What's your television contract like? They have a, a doozy set of a television contract, whatever that is. It's pretty good, by better than ours. Uh, and, uh, the, and he said, then we thought about how we could get together. And I think we should think seriously about getting together. That's the gist of what uh, he said. This is what I'm talking about, the uh, our Yep. Our, what, uh, commissioner, uh, yesterday. I guess it was yesterday. I read it this morning before I came. Well, you read it on the Internet. It must be true. Yeah, I read the Internet. It must be true. I read about five other articles saying it's going to happen. How the merger. Huh. Yeah. The merger. The merger. Yeah. I didn't see. I saw the headline on Three Down that Farhan Lalji says oh, there's going to be a lot of sacrifice for the CFL to play. Wow. And I didn't read the article. Uh, but I saw the headline, and so that's kind of what Frenzy's saying. You're very upset because what? You're hearing that every article you read, CFL's in terrible financial shape, I and they're going to have to merge with the XFL. Am I right? Uh, I want to see the CFL start playing June the 10th, <laughs> and we'll be, in, we'll be in Edmonton. Yeah. You don't believe that, do you? No. And then by the week later, the Ottawa Red Black will be here in Regina. You don't believe that, are you? Not really. Four other games, in, and four more games in July, right? Mm -hmm. The season will be determined how we do by what we do in July, just like last year when we finished thirteen and five. By the way, uh, <laughs> two I, years it, ago, it's heart. Yeah, two, two years ago. Heartbreaking to think that this league could disappear. And I talked about five or six ladies yesterday as I was walking down the street. Great football fans, and they're all really upset about this happening. They're loyal. Rough Rider fans, they've been season ticket holders for 20 years, 30 years, 35, 27 years. Great ladies, putting good money into the team, and they love, they love the stadium, they love what goes on here, and now it's just going to go away, or else we're going to join with the XFL, which we don't even know for sure. And all, right now, by the way, in case anybody cares, uh, I think that uh, he's already said that he's not going to do anything until 23. The Rock. Rock. Rock isn't going to do anything until 23. Well, he is absolutely, yeah, it's on hiatus for 2021, 2022's in doubt. So that's what leaves us. Well, none of this is good, by the way, but I want to go back. If you just turned on your television set or you've just logged in on YouTube or Facebook, I want to reread what David Naylor wrote two hours ago on TSN. And I'll be honest, of all the people, I'm following Naylor's lead on what he tweets because he's got the inside info. The owners are talking to him. I feel that's where he's getting his information from. So Naylor has said it, and I'll say it again. 
Best way I can describe current situation in CFL, players did not sign up for pay cut after pay cut and uncertainty over when or if they're getting paid. The owners did not sign up for paying salaries of players with no revenue for their businesses. There are no winners here. Are you not reading between the lines that they're done, that they're dead, that there's no money? And people just want to continue. And, and big name people that have been around this league forever banging their head against the wall saying, we're not changing, we're not changing, we're not changing. What, what part don't you get? <laughs> they're broke. <laughs> like, I don't understand. And that's why I have literally stopped fighting with people I have. And, like, and, and that's the thing I've said to tw- on Twitter to people. Have it your way, bud. You want to say whose fault it is and why we're here and why the rock is the devil? Go ahead. Well, we got one. Go one, ahead. One Whoop. owner. What? Where goes Wheaton <laughs> Kia? Hat. Right uh, on the floor. Uh, one owner, prominent, not owner. Guy runs the whole show for a team. He says, we're playing. He's told people that I know very well. <laughs> I you know. know them too. Yeah. And he's told them, we're playing this year and we're going to start. On uh, June the 10th of this year. I just would love to know why. You know what? Then tell your players and stand up and hold a news conference and say, we're guaranteeing that we're playing in 2021. Do it, please. That's all I want. Just do it. But they won't do it. I saw the governor of the Ottawa Red Blacks saying, we're 90% sure we're going to play. And that might go right up to training camp, but we're 90% sure. Don't say that. Don't say that. Because the players are making plans. We're seven weeks away from training camp, and you can't give a guarantee that it's even going to happen. <laughs> so anyways, these are some of the topics today. Our rock star of the day yesterday was Les Lazarick, the voice of the Saskatoon Blades. He was the rock star of the day for Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions. And I have not yet read our poll question of the day today for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. It is. It's the number one topic right now in the NFL, I believe. Where did it go? Oh, I didn't tweet it, Clark. That's my bad. But we have it on Facebook. Will the Seattle Seahawks trade Russell Wilson? Look at this, Lynch. 73% of them saying they will not trade Russell Wilson. So when we return, Hall of Fame Rough Riders broadcaster John Lynch and I will be joined by NFL alum and from the NFL Network, Brian Baldinger, to dig into that and all the other topics. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network across all 10 provinces and 31 states, YouTube and Facebook, live daily and 24-hour sports talk for Suds, full service car wash at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 